some, some stimulating discussions from uh, a number of uh, different countries and, and regions and, and obviously companies uh, which were implementing different approaches. So today we, have, we go to the, the country of Brazil, and Brazil in, in many ways is a, a fascinating country, and I, I think uh, I can say that more than Carnival and, and uh, soccer or, or football, as, as you all know, to stick with the stereotypes, but um, it's, a, it's a fascinating country in many ways. It's, first of all, it's the largest country in South America, as you, as you are probably well aware, um, it's really an emerging uh, economic superpower. It's uh, somewhere around the, the ninth largest uh, right now, but um, it's uh, projected to be really growing much faster as, as one of the, uh, the BRIC countries. You may be familiar with that term, Brazil, Russia, India, China. So um, one of the fast-growing developing uh, economies and could be amongst the top four. That's the projection, at least, uh, by 2050. So definitely uh, an important um, country to be to be reckoned with. Population-wise, and I know Ricardo will say a little bit more, obviously, about this, um, it's close to 200 million, so it, it, it's big in terms of people, too. Uh, fifth most populated country in the world with that. Um, it's a tremendously diverse country, uh, a large number of different ethnic groups, which is, makes the country really interesting, of course. Um, and of course, with, a, with a really interesting landscape with many different uh, areas all the way from the Amazon forest in the north and the, the beaches in the northeast to the more densely populated uh, areas in the southeast uh, of Brazil. Um, you, you may be aware there's quite a, uh, a large degree of social inequality, and Ricardo will speak to that a little bit, which uh, kind of uh, ha has an impact on, on health too, obviously. Um, I, I think I can say that uh, the, the, the people and, and, and the hospitality is just, you know, really outstanding, uh, at least in my experience. And for those of you who have been there, probably made, made similar experiences. And um, I thought it was interesting to, to, to leave you, before I hand it over to Ricardo, um, with uh, the motto of the country, which is engraved on the flag, is actually order and progress, order and progreso. So that's kind of interesting, um, you know. From a from a, a country like Brazil, that that's their their country motto. So maybe Ricardo can speak to that too. So I would like to uh, introduce uh, our first speaker, uh, Ricardo Damaki. He's a physician. He's also the CEO of CPH, is a, a company a health promotion consulting company and and, and vendor who um, has been in the field for a long time. Worked with many different uh, companies who have won awards uh, in Brazil. So he's well versed to, to, to speak to, to the, the Brazilian landscape in terms of health and health and well-being. Um, I've known Ricardo for many years, and uh, mainly through the International Institute for Health Promotion, and uh, I think he's really really a pioneer in the in the field in, in Brazil. So, um, mm. by the way, I, first of all, I have one more comment. I'd like you to probably hold questions till, till the uh, after the presentation, and as I indicated earlier, you can just. Uh, Click uh, the raise the hand button and, and, and type those questions in at any time. But we'll, we'll deal with them after the, the, the featured presentation. So, Ricardo, please, uh, por favor, uh, go ahead. Okay. Okay, thanks, Wolf. Hello, everybody. Uh, look, that Wolf uh, is more familiar than me with the Brazilian health. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I will try to, to give for you uh, an overview, just a uh, summarize review about what's going on here, and uh, after that, I will be uh, here to answer any question that you get, okay? Just an overview, so, uh, the healthcare system in Brazil, as Wolf said, we are close to 200 million inhabitants, a big population, and, uh, but the health system it's concentrated, as you can see on the slide, in small number of companies. Big companies, uh, the biggest here in São Paulo, uh, is, uh, have uh, two companies here, big. One is an insurance company, the other one is a HMO. They have around uh, 3 million, 4 million likes, each one. 
Uh, anyway, uh, the system works just on the treatment. This is our point, I think. Uh, and in disease, not in health. With pre or post paid tests. That's the, the normal uh, approach. Um, it's very, very difficult to find some uh, provider in health in healthcare that integrates uh, disease uh, sick people and uh, health people. So the integration is uh, is way better, but it's very few. Uh, no, it's not not a, a big big business. Uh, we don't have a monitoring process before the, 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 the people go to the medical care. So uh, only the individual is monitored only from the moment he enters the system. So the asymptomatic population didn't receive or doesn't receive any kind of uh, uh, approach. We have a uh, expenditure in uh, about seven, uh, about five per percent of the GDP in 2006. Okay. Uh, let me put another. Uh, the segment of private, we have two kinds of approach. One is the private health, uh, and the other one is the public health. The private health, mainly corporations are involved with the private health. Uh, they move. Sorry. Ricardo, Ricardo. Uh, yeah. This is Barry here from Life. I just wanted to okay. see um, if you've got controls of the slideshow. The slides, yes. Uh, have you? The, the, the Moses? Okay, here. Are you seeing okay. my, my slides, Barry? Yes. The only slide you can see at the moment is the Brazil's corporate health front slide. The front one. Okay, this one. So what you need to do is, is click on the, the WebEx console and just use your arrow buttons to move across to the next slide. It's working. No? I'm on the second slide now. Are you seeing? No, are you in the WebEx console? On the main, on the main WebEx console, you should, you should have a few tabs along the top. One, said, one of them says Brazil. I remember, but I can see why. This is the invitation from the story. Navigation. Okay, yeah, um, if, uh, if you want to. Oh, oh, yes, I did. I did session progress. Uh, let's see. Harry, do you want to drive it? Here. Yeah, I was just going to suggest that. I tell you what, um, Ricardo. Um, if you want to talk around slides, I don't know if this will work because I'm not too sure if you can see the screen that we can see. So I'm moving across now to slide number two, which is the overview of Brazil. Hold on. Barry, have you done it slide two? Because I only I still see the same slide. Okay. Oh my God! Now, now oh, I have. Uh, I am on the second slide, but uh, you uh, cannot. Have you got the slide there, Barry? Yes, no. Yeah. Yes, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna take control. I'm and the second one. Okay, let's do with this this way. Uh, I when I finish the comment, you change the slide. That's it. Yep, here we are. We're on slide number two, overview of Brazil. Okay. You are in the first one. No, that's it. We're on the slide that has overview Brazil in the top left-hand corner in text. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, are you which slide are you are you now? Slide number two. Number two. Health care system. Okay. I already did some comments about the healthcare system that's concentrated in the hands of a small number of companies and just medical assistance. Not they they they, they don't provide uh, uh, any other uh, action in with health people. Uh, so there is a, a huge demand for health promotion, but it's mainly by other kind of providers, not from the health plans. Uh, uh, as I said, the total expenditure on health is around 80% uh, of GDP. Uh, uh, let's go to the other one, please, uh, Barry. Okay? Healthcare system. Okay, the, the third one now. The third one. Yes. The, okay. So uh, we have around 42 million people involved in the private healthcare. It's the second country in the world after U.S. The first one after U.S. So it's a huge population that is open or should receive uh, uh, health promotion too. Uh, and however, more than 65% of our population are out of this market in every part of Brazil. Uh, and they depend of a public health system, mainly in such Supplementary system of health, uh, SUS, SUS. But they are very uh, uh, problematic with uh, financial problems, infrastructure, and service. So, if you need uh, in Brazil the public service, it's not so good. So, for the, the most part of the population use. Uh, the private health uh, system. Uh, let's go to the fourth, next one. This is a map of Brazil. Uh, we are Sao Paulo, where I'm, I'm here in Sao Paulo. is the southeast region. Uh, uh, and we have 42% uh, of the population. And the, as you can see, 72% of the health plan lives are here in this area. So it's very concentrated. It's the richest area in Brazil, the southeast. And the south, the second, with three states, uh, they have another 11% uh, of lives. So together, uh, the southeast, and south regions are more, more than 80% of the population involved in healthcare. Just for an idea, the, the green on the top is the north region Amazon, the jungle oh, anyway. The yellow one is northeast, it's uh, a poor region also. So, uh, uh, southeast is the best. Well, the constants, when I talk, when we talk with the companies, in every company that I go or discuss with human reserves or physicians or benefit people, uh, all the people touch in this uh, point. Uh, healthcare costs, it's spread, how I, we can do to decrease the cost, I think that is worth, worthwhile. This. And uh, uh, they know that they have to do something, but the investment is so little to do that. Uh, so we are improving this marketing. We try to show results, benefits regarding 
workability, productivity, more than a healthcare cut. And it's a long way. We are involved in health promotion here since the 80, beginning uh, uh, in 85, 86. In that time, it was very difficult to uh, show something. I uh, yeah, was likely to talk uh, to a wall. And now, of course, uh, there are a lot of, of providers and uh, uh, the they are more familiar uh, with this uh, uh, topic. The other slide, prevailing health issues and risk behaviors. Uh, here, uh, the first approach, is, as you know, is, I think that in most parts of the world, we do a uh, uh, health risk appraisal or uh, a different tools like a health lifestyle investigation uh, besides the medical uh, uh, data. So, uh, uh, we already did uh, more than 100,000 questionnaires here in Brazil. And uh, some, some points uh, show that we have a high level of uh, physical is not easy. More than 65% of the, the people are sedentary. Overweight is a big issue here, more than 50%. And stress in all over the world. So, uh, and other issues that if you want, we can discuss uh, after this presentation. Uh, during 10 years, we are doing this uh, survey and uh, uh, that is a, a, a report that I always take with me when I, I go to companies to, to establish uh, uh, the relationship. So this is uh, the profile. I think that is similar in, with all the, the global profiles. It's the same in the corporate environment, of course. We are talking about companies here. Uh, the profile of the employee and the workforce is more or less the same thing. Uh, pressure, sedentary work, no time to relax. I uh, access of a point, agenda full. Uh, the diet is not always good, uh, too much and not adequate, uh, healthy diet. Uh, uh, the balance between professional life and personal life is not uh, a balance, eh? it's uh, unbalanced. More attention to professional life. Pressure in all the time in Sao Paulo, mainly in Sao Paulo, the city. Sao Paulo is complicated because traffic, violence, anyway. To move from your home to your office, depends where you live, it takes one hour, two hours or more. The public transportation sometimes doesn't work. But anyway, this is, uh, is the way we live here. Uh, tiredness and uh, at the end of the day, everybody you know, you don't have time to go out and socialize because if you have to, 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 to go to your home and get practice, it takes two hours to go and then you arrive in, uh, early, uh, late in your home. So, and vacations also. I remember that uh, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, I think that everybody remembers it was normal to get uh, one month on vacation. And now, uh, there is no time to do that. The, the company uh, needs the professional there, and so they get some 15 days now and 15 days in the end of the year. But uh, I think that the stress is a very big issue also in the, in, in the corporate environment. Uh, some products and services for drivers in work, uh, such as promotion, that we are discussing uh, during the approach was well, 
environment, the ambience, the satisfaction, uh, job satisfaction, but same thing is, is uh, top that we are trying to manage more deeply. Productivity and workability, of course. Disease energy is growing a lot. We have some uh, discussion here about disease management, how to maintain the behavior after the first approach, but we have a good monitoring system anyway. But uh, it's difficult to keep the, the, the people or the person involved and uh, attraction is another uh, uh, issue that uh, some companies use uh, health promotion to attract it saying that this is a good benefit and anyway it's uh, important the difference anyway that's just the I think that's the same plan. I think it's that as we do here in health promotion the other slide uh, first of all, of course, is the health profile. And several providers, they have different kinds of approach, but always uh, health profile, um, asking for medical behavior, sleep, physical activity, nutrition, uh, emotional health, uh, anyway, all the smoking. Uh, after the health profile, we have a report and discuss with the, the company that kind of report. Uh, there is a monitoring process with high, moderate, and low risk with different protocols by nurses in call centers. Uh, uh, interventions uh, that we do during the, the process, uh, practical, uh, practical intervention walking and the other kind of uh, intervention. Disease management, as I said. EAP now is growing a lot. Uh, and quite it's a problem. I'm sure that the most part of you are familiar with EAP too. And uh, EAP starts here uh, with drugs, alcohol, and uh, psychological health. And now we are offering also physical health, physical counseling in EAP. How to use the medical plan, nutrition, anyway, all these uh, points that I mentioned before. PBF is another uh, issue that is very developed. We through PDM and we can get some good information to uh, uh, monitor to manage the, the health. Education tracks, educational process with uh, uh, using the internet, email, uh, intranet, portal, anyway. Concierge uh, is a kind of... Ricardo, can I just interrupt? Sorry. Yeah. But your audio quality is not that great. Um, is there any possibility of talking closer to the mic or, or uh, improving I'm, that? Yes, I, I will try, but the mic is very close to my mouth. Yeah, it's, uh, okay. Better. But I suggest you uh, uh, try to wrap up in a minute or two, and then we then we have to, then we should probably move on. It's very difficult to understand you. Okay. But is that okay? Perfect. If I if you could just wrap up, just finish off with maybe with one slide or uh, to finish it off and then we can uh, probably uh, move on. Okay, okay. So let's go to the uh, the almost the, the, the six, seven slides ahead. Okay. Just so to finish, so uh, this is the scenario of Brazil. We have a uh, lot of uh, demands, and the demands are high, and uh, health promotion here is improving. Companies are open to do that, not, not so much budget, uh, but, but anyway, it's growing, it's uh, developing. And uh, big companies are uh, 
inspiring this kind of uh, concept. I think that this, uh, since you said, that well, we can stop here and try to to go to the Q and A better than than this. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, first of all, thank you, Ricardo. And I apologize to everybody else for the for the for the bad quality of the audio. I'm not sure what we can do. But the, the last few minutes was a little little better, actually. Um, first of all, Barry, do you see any, or does anybody have any questions at this point? You may have a lot because it's hard to understand, but any, anything that you want to ask uh, Ricardo at this point? Okay, Barry, do, do you see any questions? or? There's been no raising of hands just yet. Okay. Uh, and no questions either. But apart from one uh, feedback uh, from an individual, let me just bring that up again. Okay. I can hear you very well, oh, Wolf and Barry. Yeah, it's something on your side, Ricardo. Something there's a, a lot of feedback breaking up. I don't know. Maybe maybe you need to call in again. I don't know. Or, or just stay on the line, I guess, for now. Yeah, it's actually from uh, Claudio Tesla from um, sorry um, from. The black face from Brazil. I know him. Yeah, she was just saying about um, and then in Brazil, it's a, it's very important to have engagement. As well, she feels that that's very important factor as well. He is uh, connected, Barry. Claudio is connected. Yep, I was just saying. Hear, you can hear me. We have. Yes. yes, Ricardo. Yes. The comment was engagement. That is uh, important as, as another factor for in, in regard to employee health. That's right. And um, also, Claudio has another question. She says, that how can we engage people in health promotion? How, how we can engage people, that's it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's not easy, man. It's, it's a, a, a question that everybody does. How to engage people? Uh, I think that we have to make this concept more familiar in, in the companies, showing that the, 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 this way that show the results and, and be more, uh, uh, have a, how I say, a management process more efficient and, and uh, uh, when I when I think about incentives, uh, uh, maybe if we add some kind of incentives uh, to the to, to the process, of course we will have more engagement. But as you know, there is a lot of people that are reactive to this, this kind of approach. Uh, if you think about readiness to change, different uh, approach, you have to have a uh, different approach. But um, uh, another point is if you have uh, a kind of system where the co-payment is uh, implanted, we, uh, you can, can think about uh, this and... Uh, show to the guy that if he is engaged, he will pay more, less for his health plan. But this is our big discussion here. Uh, of course, Claudio knows uh, very well this kind of uh, uh, situation. And uh, I don't have a, a, the best way to engage people, but the things of the CEO, Depend of the uh, company policy. Uh, anyway, a lot of uh, variables can okay can just, be involved in this engagement. Just just one word on incentives, uh, Ricardo. You, you mentioned incentives and uh, the 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 Buck Global Survey, which I know a lot of you are familiar with, uh, with because we've had it before on our calls. The the Global Wellness Survey or Global Health Promotion Survey. They they uh, they have a, a report on uh, specifically on Brazil, and about 150 companies participated. So a fairly large number for for one country, and they asked them about prevalence of incentive rewards. And um, 
it was 16%, one six. And these, these are obviously some of the more progressive companies or active companies in the field. So one six, 16%, which is relatively low compared with all the other regions. We all know uh, that the U.S. Is, is leading in this field that, according to this survey, about 56 or more than half actually offered them uh, right now incentives. Uh, but even other regions like Asia, Australia, uh, you know, Europe were, were higher uh, in terms of prevalence, in terms of offering incentive uh, rewards than, than Brazil. Just, just to give you a little bit of an idea of, of the popularity um, uh, of incentives. And that, that's based on the, on the Buck Global Survey. Barry, should we take another question? Sure. We've got one that, um, that's from Sue Palomba. Uh, since stress is a significant health issue, how receptive are employees in Brazil to using an EAP? Are they generally comfortable talking to someone about personal mental health issues? Uh, uh, let's see if I understand. Uh, EAP, Ricardo, uh, Employee here, Assistance here. Program, yeah. EAP. Yeah, yeah. Popular in Brazil, or does it work? Yes, it starts, uh, let's say, 10 years ago. It's more popular now, but uh, just big companies are... Uh, let's say implementing the real EAP. Some companies uh, have uh, kind of uh, counseling, uh, ex external counseling in mental health. But now uh, I think that the EAP is going better, and they talking about as I said before in mental health drugs. Alcohol, financial issues, uh, legal issues, and uh, the next step, it's my feeling, will be, uh, will be um, the, um, the next step will be physical uh, content on the EAP. Because EAP is an uh, employee assistance program. So everything that you can add to the main concept of EAP to help people, to assist the employee, would, would be good. And that uh, we have three or four companies here, big companies, that are doing EAP, and uh, it's growing. That's the growing. Mental health is a stigma also in all of the world. The people doesn't like to be open to discuss his or their mental health. But what I I always said here, instead of saying uh, uh, we, we here uh, here we say mental disease and change this. Uh, way and say mental health, like physical health. You can have uh, better physical health than me, and this is normal. So, of course, you can have a better mental health than me, and it's normal too. Depends uh, what kind of approach you, you do. Okay, thank you, Ricardo. Larry, do you have other questions? I think there are some more, right? Barry? Barry? All right, well, uh, let, me, let me take one. I see one from Elizabeth. Um, that's the only one I can see on my screen. Uh, are companies considering flexibility options as a way to deal with stress? For example, work at home, flexible start time. What do you think, Ricardo? Flexibility options. Yes, I think that's a good idea, but depends what kind of conditions. Right? I think that today in the office, the most part of the work you can do in home by computer. And mainly in Sao Paulo, uh, with traffic, uh, the, the, the long hours on trains would be a nice uh, way to, to do this. And the companies are aware about that uh, flexi uh, flexible time instead of you getting at 80, you can get in at 9, 9.30, and, and anyway, there is a, a very uh, awareness, a 
uh, aware, the, 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 the companies are aware about this kind of concept. And uh, I think that in the future, this will be a more important issue uh, if you can uh, work in your computer, of course, and the, the uh, administrative work, not the, the production work. Okay. Uh, let's take a couple more. Barry, what, any more questions? Yeah, um, I've just selected one from uh, Tony Massey, who, who actually is RMD. Um, it'd be interesting to hear Ricardo's perspective on uh, to what extent private companies in Brazil believe improvements in health and wellness will lead to improvements in employee productivity. Is an absenteeism stroke presenteeism improvement along a strong enough return on investment to justify expenses for a health and wellness program? Yes, uh, I think uh, our absenteeism or presenteeism are both important. Uh, and through them, we can show uh, the importance of the investment. But as you know, uh, to how to measure presenteeism is not easy eh, because it's it's very difficult to, to get the real rate of presentism. We are trying to, to discuss more this through the Association of uh, Quality of Life. Here there is a, a Brazilian Association of Quality of Life. We are trying to discuss this in small committees, how to do this kind of approach. And I think, as you know, uh, presentism uh, represents more than 60% of the stuff. So, of course, the, he will be, it will be in the agenda for the next years. And uh, I think that uh, a lot of companies are open to do that and supporting also another industry here that are thinking deeply in this uh, point is the pharmaceutical uh, industry. They are discussing presentism uh, also and try to help the company too. But it's a very important issue, of course, issue. I, I agree and uh, I think that we have to be more hard. Uh, focus on the presentation. Ricardo, um, just just for a question, um, is there a presentism uh, tool, a, a self-reported instrument, currently being used in Brazil that you are aware of? Uh, the work, uh, I, I I know some some of the systems. Eh? Uh, you know Debra, eh? you know Debra. Uh, we are using. Uh, not me, but some companies are uh, uh, using one or two tools, one for Stanford, I believe, another one from Canada. Uh, anyway, uh, that's my, my, my information. I never did uh, evaluation of business through CPH, never. Okay. All right. Uh, I'd like to give – thank you, Ricardo. I'd like to give Edmundo Prince the opportunity. He's from uh, the health service manager from ABB, and I, I apologize again that we didn't get his presentation loaded. We had, we had some, some issues there. Um, Barry, if you could unmute him, I would like to give Edmundo the chance to, to really just briefly um, describe uh, ABB's program, specifically – in terms of winning the, the, the award, the, the National Award for Quality of Life. Uh, Edmundo, are you, are you there? The line should be unmuted. Edmundo, can, can, you, can you hear us or can you say something? Yeah, I, guess, <laughs> I guess not. So it's going it, to be our day today with all the um, um, uh, Barry, uh, did, uh, does he have a question? I see his hand raised. Do you, do you have anything on, on uh, written? 
Nothing has been written. Okay. All right. Well, uh, well I just just to finish, I would like to add a comment, a general comment about the scenario here. I think that uh, Brazil is uh, the opportunity here is to improve this concept of health promotion is very big, very big, very high. And uh, I'm feeling now that uh, several companies, international companies, providers, not employers, but providers, are looking at our country and trying to establish some uh, links with other providers here to get in and develop this so it's an uh, opportunity for everyone that are in, in linked now in the web seminar to think about that and uh, I think that can be a, the new uh, moment of health promotion here. So uh, this is a uh, very clear for me uh, that uh, in some years we will have big companies developing systems and yeah, yeah. problems here. Yeah, you know that. This is an opportunity for everyone, every company, every provide in all over the world. So okay. Um, thank you, Ricardo. Uh, that's Barry, let's. let's uh, uh, let's take one more question, and then the, the other one. I know we have a, step, uh, a number of additional questions, but uh, we'll we'll probably take those uh, and send you the answers. But just in terms of the audio, just let's take one more question, and then we'll I'll, I'll wrap this up, and then we'll go from there. Barry, can you can you let, uh, read one more? Sure, Kevin Sullivan. Um, he's asking: Is there any anticipated change in providing treatment and prevention services to those people who receive services through the public health system? If, can you repeat, Barry? I didn't hear you so well. If there is no. an anticipation... Is there uh, any anticipated change in providing treatment and prevention services to those people who receive no. services through the public health system? No, no. The, the national agents now uh, is trying to develop some kind of uh, way, but not yet. Not yet. Preventive medicine here is linked with uh, uh, other kind of disease and uh, not to uh, health lifestyle, uh, more for, uh, uh, infectious disease, uh, prevention against malaria, prevention against, against cholera, against the uh, uh, AID, and uh, something like that. Uh, not uh, a real preventive service to, to pre prevent people, to treat people with uh, high risk, like obesity. Or uh, if obesity goes to the service, he can be treated, but not our official uh, area saying we can, uh, say we do uh, uh, the real preventive approach. No, okay. Thank you, Ricardo. Um, let me let me just wrap up uh, the, the uh, our presentation here or our session. I just wanted to mention uh, Ricardo just mentioned the ABQV, which is the Association, the Brazilian Association for Quality of Life, and I think that will be a, a good resource for all of you. Um, it's, it's basically abqv.com.br. And uh, they've been really a leading association um, for, for a number of years, for many years, actually, and uh, especially with their national award for, for quality of life. And I know that some of the participants actually on the call here have, have won this award. So I, I would recommend that you take a look at that for more resources. Uh, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's in Portuguese, and I think they're working on their English uh, language um, portion of that, just, just as a resource. Um, well, first of all, thanks for, for going through this. I know we had some technical problems, but I'd like uh, to make you aware that we, we do have additional uh, webinars. Our next one is in May. Uh, 
and the focus, uh, the regional focus is Europe, and we'll probably narrow that down to, to, to a country. Um, but the focus will be really on sort of na uh, navigating data privacy and also working with some of the employee representative groups. And, and those of you who have sites here are, you know, probably very well familiar with, with the challenges of doing that. So that should be, should be really interesting. And so look out for the, for the, um, the uh, announcement on that. And in addition, I'd like to say, in order to, to get more out of Brazil, we will follow up, uh, respond to the questions that, uh, that were asked, uh, the outstanding ones. We will also provide the presentation of Ricardo, and we will um, uh, provide a uh, presentation from, from ABB, which we you know, unfortunately couldn't upload uh, with uh, some technical problems. So, so we will get those for sure, and um, so you'll get the information. And again, I apologize uh, for, the, for the problems. Um, and I wish you uh, a successful rest of your week. And if, uh, Gary, do you have any other comments at this point? Or? Um, nothing from me. Okay. All right. Well, sorry for the sound quality, but we'll work on it, and we'll get you the information through, through email. Thank you very much for joining, and thanks to Ricardo. Goodbye. Thanks both. Goodbye, and good day. Ciao.